Hey everyone. Previously, we created a transactional database for a library and then created a dimensional model from it. Now let's take our library database and model it into a data vault, an alternative style of data warehousing from the more common dimensional warehouse. The vault has a more complex data model, but allows for easier ETL and more flexibility to handle changes in the source data. So let's model a data vault. Here's our diagram of the transactional library database. We want to take this and remodel it to work as a data vault for reporting and analytics. Normally, a data vault would contain lots of data from numerous sources, but this should give a good introduction to the basics of building out a vault. As always, we want to consider our business process. A borrower goes to a library, finds a book, and borrows it. They should be able to look up the book by author, publisher, topic, etc and we should know what books are stored at each library, what's checked out, and when they're due back. The first step we want to do is consider all of our critical business keys. We have the book ISBN, the borrower's card number, library ID, publisher ID, address ID, and author ID. We also want to note what many-to-many -many junction tables we have that connect data together. We'll be noting our surrogate keys with the SK suffix and our business keys with the BK suffix for clarity in the example. Next, we want to take our business keys and consider them for hub tables. We'll use ISBN to create book hub, which includes the ISBN as a business key, a surrogate key designated with SK, and then the load date and source the data came from. This provides us with the business key used by the source a surrogate key we can use isolated and protected from any difficult business keys, such as differing formats from sources, the data source for tracking data lineage, and the load date for history. We'll continue the process with library, borrower, and publisher to create hubs. With address, I have opted to not turn that into a hub, as we can denormalize that data and store it as attributes of the other hubs. Author could go either way, but I've opted to store the author name as an attribute of the book. It's possible use cases could make this more desirable as a hub though. For our links, we want to look at our many-to-many -many junction tables and consider, and consider if they make good link tables. We have book locations, which would be a good link between book and library hubs, and borrowed books, which links our borrowers and our books. Just like hubs, we want to load in a surrogate key for the link table, along with surrogate keys for each of the hubs that the link connects. In the case of borrowed books, this links three hubs, borrowers, libraries, and books. Additionally, we want to add in our source and load date metadata. Now for all of our attribute data, we want to set up satellite tables. These are associated with either a hub or a link, and each hub or link can have multiple satellites. Each satellite will represent a topic of attributes. For example, we have the book hub table. We have attributes of the book, such as title and description. We also have attributes of the author tied to the book. In this case, name, but we could potentially have other author attributes added here. Each satellite will contain the surrogate key of the hub or link it's tied to, the attribute fields, and then the source and load date. For library, borrower, and publisher hubs, we'll have a satellite for their core attributes and a satellite for address information directly. We use separate address entities because we want each hub to be isolated from the others, to be better able to handle changes in source data and for easier ETL patterns. Links like book library and borrowed book will also have satellites to contain any attributes for them. The last thing to consider is reference tables where we store lookups such as codes and descriptions. We don't have a good example in this data, but often there are business codes or abbreviations where reporting would prefer to use friendly descriptions. These can be stored in reference tables to convert raw codes into friendly descriptions in the reporting layer of the vault. Here's our final list of tables and fields we want to create for the data vault. I included a potential reference table for date as an example, though I don't think it's needed for this design. And here everything is converted into an ER diagram. You can see hub libraries with its two satellites for library data and address data. It connects to link book library with its satellite and then over to hub books. 
Note that I've changed publisher from hub to a satellite on books. This felt like a smoother way to bring in publisher data, at least in its current form. It's possible that creating a hub publisher with a publisher to book link would work better, but with the limited test dataset, this configuration seemed to work best. As always, the reporting needs of the data vault will guide a lot of the modeling process. So those are the basics to model a data vault. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Stick around for more data content by subscribing to the channel or clicking a video on screen. See you in the next one.